As someone who once caused a multiple fire engine call out at a three Michelin starred restaurant at 3 a.m., let me tell you, I am very, very good at burning food. Cooking with finesse, not so much, but we're in my yard and so today we're gonna play to my strengths. Get a grill and let it rip. But wait, isn't burning food bad? Doesn't it taste disgusting? Doesn't it ruin the dish? Some foods like this bread burn very easily and become acrid and inedible. While other foods, no matter how much heat you throw at them, are rendered delicious and can bring an extra dimension to a dish. So in this video, we're gonna look at what these magical foods are, we're going to see how to do it, and we're gonna reveal why it works, and also a piece of information that my old head chef and the Maidenhead Fire Department wish I knew a few years ago. By answering these questions, we can understand cooking more deeply, and we can move past the usual explanation of why we enjoy foods that have been cooked over fire so much and to something way more general that will help make you a better cook from the bottom up. That will be the science, but first, the art. So how do we do it? Well, given that our ancestors were doing this tens to hundreds of thousands of years ago and were literally Neanderthals, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is set up a fire, be it in a barbecue, in a hibachi, in your wood burner, in a chimney in the garden, and just set it on fire. Put the ingredient on top. Now, some foods work really well and some foods don't. So I've got three simple guidelines that can help you get started and start experimenting with cooking over fire. One, use a whole food. Whole foods develop flavor. Processed foods, it's a bit more complicated. Two, be deliberate. If you catch the bottom of a pan with something that you're cooking that isn't meant to have that flavor, it's not necessarily going to be pleasant and it can be unexpected. So if you're gonna burn something, plan ahead of time. And three, when it's black, it's cooked. This is what you want. Don't faff around with this white stuff. It's a bit more different for meats as they can be overcooked quite easily, but for vegetables, full send. Great, and so what kind of things can we do with these blackened vegetables? Well, there's a number of things that are relatively straightforward. We can simply put them in oil and the oil will then take on the flavor of these ingredients, which you can use to make a mayonnaise. You can poach fish in it. You could finish a soup with it. Or you could take the vegetables and you can dry them out further, which you can then grind into a powder and you have like a really concentrated version of that smoky bitterness that you can use to season other food or coat other vegetables. Or most simply, you can just use the vegetables as they are as a garnish with anything else that you're eating. Just add a bit of salt and season them up as you would any other ingredient and they will be delicious. If you've watched this far and are enjoying this content, I don't care if you click like or subscribe because the algorithm is gonna show you more of my content anyway. <laughs> don't click dislike, no. So the foods that we've cooked over fire in this way to this degree take on a bitter, burnt, smoky character, which for some of them can be delicious all of itself. So a carrot, for example, got the sweetness that goes very well with the rest of it. But for others, and even the carrot itself, if we add other things that have other prominent flavors and tastes, then we can improve it even more. So a vinaigrette works incredibly well with grilled vegetables and meats. Uh, sweetness does go really well, believe it or not. And if you think of a creme brulee, that's the same principle. We can add salt as always, and umami also works great with burnt foods. Now you may have realized that that's all five of the main tastes covered, and you'd be right and they all go really well with these bitter burnt flavors because deliciousness isn't about what goes with what. It's not about sweetness, tempering bitterness or acid cutting through fat and those other things that you might have learned and certainly I learned when I started seven years ago. It's far more general than that. What we need for deliciousness is to build complexity and adding tastes to other tastes is a great way to add complexity. But what is complexity in cooking? Well, let me explain. You may have heard that we evolved to learn to enjoy these foods cooked over fire and the smoky burnt flavors because they allowed our ancestors to get access to more nutrition. And that increased nutrition allowed our incredibly energy hungry brains to get bigger. Now a bigger brain is obviously a good thing and it's a wonderful hypothesis and it might be right. But nature and evolution cannot know 10,000 years ahead of time what this conferred advantage will be. And we need to think what is the immediate advantage to cooking over fire? What was the incentive for our ancestors to cook? Now, the only reason it's been proposed that our ancestors cooked over fire is for one reason and one reason alone, and is the reason that we still eat it today. It tasted delicious. Our ancestors didn't need to learn to like it, they just did, and so they sought it out again and again, and they experimented to see what else they could cook. 
I'm putting aside the safety of cooked meat because our ancestors were probably a lot harder than us and there weren't exactly health inspectors running around. Now nature already produced delicious things in fruits and fruiting bodies like truffles, but with fire, our ancestors could take foods to places that nature could not and rival fruits with their deliciousness. So what is the insight here? What do these delicious things have in common? So perfectly ripe fruits and foods cooked over fire share one crucial characteristic, and that is that they are chemically complex in their tastes and in their aromas. Now you may have heard of food being described as complex before, certainly say wines and chocolates and roasted meats and other things, and this is where flavors merge together and also appear one after the other with no real dominant flavor, a symphony of taste. To taste or smell anything, we need to have small molecules present, and these are then picked up by our nose and our tongues. And the reason why cooked foods taste better is because they've gone through a limited process of molecular breakdown. And in doing so, the large tasteless molecules like the proteins and other molecules that make up the larger structures in living things are broken down into small ones that we can then detect, like hundreds and sometimes into the thousands of molecules are produced and that produces something that is chemically complex and potentially delicious. Now the art of cooking may well be infinite and that's before you even start putting ingredients and techniques together which is even more infinite. It's a huge topic and I can't wait to explore more of it in the videos to come. But today we've narrowed it down just to look at the first original cooking method of cooking over fire. So if you've stayed until the end, then I'm going to share with you the piece of information that my old head chef and the Maidenhead Fire Department wish I knew. You might want a pen and paper. The alarm in the washing up area at the Thack Duck was a heat alarm, not a smoke alarm. And when you wash up a really hot pan with water, you produce steam, which sets off a heat alarm. Cheers, I'll uh, see you in the next one.